What's up guys? Hope you've all been doing well. Today I'm going to be making a continuation of my RAM video. Alright, so basic intro for this video is that a computer system has a lot of different types of memory besides RAM. I'm going to try to introduce those other types of memory and give you a basic understanding of how they work and how they may be utilized in the computer system. Let's do it. The basic foundation of computer memory is something called the memory hierarchy. Here is a picture of the memory hierarchy. Don't look too closely at it yet, just let me introduce it first. First, check out the bottom of the memory hierarchy. These include memories that are really slow, but really big. Examples include your hard drives, your flash drives. They can hold terabytes of data and have your music, your games, your, porno your movies. You get the idea, right? So bottom of the hierarchy is for slow and big memories. At the very top of the memory hierarchy, that's where the fastest and smallest memories exist. The fastest and smallest memory is a register, and I'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's just recap real quick. The bottom of the memory is for slow and big memories. The top of the hierarchy is for fast but really small memories. Just keep that in mind and everything will be a lot easier to understand. So the slowest and biggest memories, you already know, those are your hard drives. They keep all the data in when there's no electricity in them and you can carry them around and they hold terabytes of stuff. Now, the next level of memory above hard drives and disk memory is RAM. You can never really have terabytes of RAM, just gigabytes of it. It's much smaller than your hard drive, but it's much faster to access. Remember, any type of program that you run on your computer has to exist in RAM first for the processor to execute it. Okay, so now let's go one level above RAM to a memory that's called an L2 cache. L2 cache memory sounds really cool, and it is really cool, so check it out. So the drill here is the same. An L2 cache is smaller than RAM, but it's also much faster. While you have 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, your L2 cache is on the order of megabytes, maybe 256 megabytes. The concept of an L2 cache is more or less simple. Important data that's accessed frequently is kept in the L2 cache so the processor can get to it much faster without going back to RAM. If your closet was RAM, then the L2 cache would be your bedroom floor where you keep your favorite boxers all the time that you wear every day. Now, all the memory that I've talked to up until this point is called off-chip memory. And what is off-chip memory? Let me just talk about that real quick. If you ever open up your cell phone or open up your computer, you see that processor is that cool little square thing that you plop in and then you put like a big cooling system on it to keep it cold, right? That's the processor, also known as the chip. Whenever someone says something is off chip, it's not included on that little cool square processor. When you upgrade your computer and buy two new sticks of RAM, you stick them on your motherboard. You don't stick them inside your processor, right? So RAM is an off chip memory. L2 cache is also an off chip memory. All the memory I've talked to up until this point, hard drives, RAM, L2 cache, that's off the chip. Now let's talk about what's on chip. The first memory that's on chip is something called the L1 cache. What is L2 and L1? It's just level two and level one cache. Usually a level two cache is off chip and a level one cache is on chip. That's usually the only difference. Well, it's the same drill again here. An L1 cache is smaller than an L2 cache, but it's also much, much faster to access. A general rule of thumb is that if anything is on chip, it's very fast. If there's off chip memory, the processor needs to go a special way to get to it, and it could be slow. Now, above L1 caches is a memory called registers, and this is the last level I'm gonna talk about. A register is the smallest and the fastest piece of memory inside a computer system. And one cool thing to note here is that the number of registers is actually defined by the instruction set architecture. If you forget what that is, just watch my processor video again, but pretty much different instruction set architectures kind of dictate how many registers there have to be. And then different implementations will accommodate for that. All right, so let's just put up the hierarchy back up here real quick. On the bottom, you have hard drives or disk memories. They're really slow. Above that is RAM, which you need electricity to work. Above RAM is L2 cache, and that's the last level of off-chip memory. After that, we move to on-chip memory, which include L1 cache and registers. So that is a lot of different computer memories. Kind of cool, right? 
And right now I'm gonna to try to put some of these speeds in perspective so you guys can appreciate how fast and how slow some of these memories are. Remember with a computer processor, everything is measured in terms of cycles per second. So if you have a one gigahertz processor, it can do one billion cycles per second. Pretend I'm your chef processor for today. I am a pretty slow processor, so for simplicity, let's just say I can do one cycle every second. So a register, which is the fastest type of memory, takes zero to one second to access. So that'd be like if I had a knife in my chef apron, I just take it out, it takes me less than a second to get to it. Super fast. After registers, we have the L1 cache, which is also an on-chip memory, and it's really, really fast. L1 cache isn't as fast as registers, it's still almost instantaneous. It's kind of like if I'm a chef and there's an onion on the table, I just grab it and chop up the onion. It's really fast. Once we start going into off-chip memories, things start getting kind of slow. First, let's put L2 cache into perspective. Say you need a special Chinese spice. So to go back to the pantry and get that special Chinese spice, it's gonna take you about 10 seconds. That analogy is about equivalent to an L2 cache access. Most L2 accesses are about 10 seconds, which is 10 times or so slower than L1 or register access. Okay, so now we're moving down the hierarchy and after L2 cache memory is RAM. To use the spicy sauce, you need to get a live duck. You need to get out of the kitchen and kill your duck and bring it back. It's going to take you like two minutes or so. RAM is about a hundred times slower than a register access. Alright, so you get your duck and everything's good, but then you forgot that you left the pig out and you need to get a pig, damn it. And access to disk memory can be millions of times slower than a register access. If it takes you one second to get out your chef knife, that's about 11 days to get this pig. You need to drive across China, camp out a little bit, you need to slay the pig, then spend three days doing nothing, and then drive back to your kitchen, and then you have your pig. The moral of the story is, is that a computer processor never wants to access anything in disk memory. It's usually way too slow. All right, so hopefully you guys have a little bit of a better appreciation of how much faster some memories can be than others inside one computer system. Just remember the basics of the memory hierarchy. At the bottom, we have slow but very big memories. And at the top, we have small but very fast memories. Every level of memory on the computer hierarchy is a cache for the level below it. The term caching is very general. Computers are super complicated things, but they're really amazing. It still boggles my mind how they work. They just all work somehow. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and got a better appreciation of the different types of memory in a computer system. The memory hierarchy is a really good foundation to know and hopefully the knowledge is useful for you sometime. All right, I hope you guys had some fun, learned something, and make sure to check out some of my other videos if you haven't already. So. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.